I've been waiting a bit to rate Genuine Joe's. It's great. The hospitality from the staff and Josh, the owner-manager, is very impressive. I really enjoy the at-home, comfortable atmosphere. And last but not least, the coffee is fantastic. My wife and I have been going one to two times a week for a late afternoon iced coffee or iced Americano pick-me-up. I love supporting local business, and Genuine Joe's is the place to go for a great cup of coffee, hot or cold. Every time I need to grab coffee with a friend or lounge around and catch up on some reading, I go to Genuine Joe's. I've been coming here for seven years. It's my absolute favorite coffee shop. This is the best coffee, coffee shop. shop on the north side of Tarawa, and really one of the best snacks. Yeah. 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 I've never had a bad coffee there. I love the pumpkin And I really appreciate the warm atmosphere. It reminds me of my grandma's house. Absolutely delicious. Turn this coffee into a coffee home. If you're up on Anderson and feel the need for coffee, it would be a mistake not to go to Genuine Joe's. Here we go. Here we go. You just take the camera, put the viewfinder. What was that? I'm trying to figure out how to no, zoom you didn't in. Hear that. Oh no, I did not. Doesn't matter. Oh, it's what I'm sitting on. Doesn't matter. Oh. All right. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Would you mind introducing yourself for everyone? Yes. Cool, cool. My name is Meg Kazen. I am the director slash filmmaker slash barista of the documentary you are about to watch called Genuine Joe. Genuine Joe. Joe's. I don't know if it's Genuine Joe Coffee House yet, but I kind of like Genuine Joe Coffee House because that's what it's called. But I was thinking just Genuine Joe, but maybe not. You'll know, because you're watching it, but I don't know yet. That's me. It was like Raven Baxter. <laughs> what? You know Raven Baxter? You know the end of That's a Raven? It's like, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's me. That's me. <laughs> All right. Um, so how many times have you refilmed this intro exactly? I... Jobs. <sighs> this is gonna be a little hard. I have refilmed this a real good amount of times. It was fun. I I tried it in my closet. Oh, enjoy. Don't be confused. Even if you are, you'll love it anyways. Alright. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Sorry, just gotta. Just gotta move. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. I tried it in the early crack of dawn. Never ending? Never ending exhaustion. I tried... Uh, what else? Did I oh, outside! I don't know how loud I have to shout for you to hear me. I'm not sure if it's the best place to film, but we're doing it anyways. And a few other times where it just didn't work out. What's your favorite drink at Genuine Joe's? If you know me, and you don't know me, <laughs> it's the three-way mocha. It's my favorite. It was the first drink I, I ever tried before I even started working there. And it's my favorite now. What makes Genuine Joe's special to you? What makes Genuine Joe's special to me? is that, okay, this is what I realized, is that, especially when I first walked in, I realized it was different than like all the other jobs I've had. Especially because it wasn't corporate. It was its own thing, it was, it's not a chain. I had a specific saying, it was strangely magical. Okay, so it has this sort of vibe where you walk in and you immediately feel, it's the music, it's, it's everything you see, the art, it's the dinosaurs, it's, you know, just as soon as you walk in, you immediately feel, for me at least, calm, um, tired, <laughs> um, and you, I personally feel like I can relax, like I feel like I can just be. And I've never had a job where I felt like I can just be. This documentary faced its own technical issues regarding audio, 
timing, professionalism. confidently say it's far from perfect and I wouldn't have it any other way because at its core it's wonderfully genuine so enjoy is that cute or is that I think it's cute I think I like it I'm just waiting for him to come kind of Okay. All right, so I pulled up the documentary questions. And the first question is, what's your name? My name is Josh Brown. And what's this place called? This place is Genuine Joe Coffee House. Wonderful. Where is Genuine Joe's located? In North Austin, used to be very far North Austin when the town felt a little smaller. Now it's kind of North Central in the thick of things. How long has Genuine Joe's been open? Uh, we've been here for 16 years now. Kind of well. Uh, there's some different stories about the house of how far uh, back it's gone. The owners of the house uh, say it's gone back uh, to the 1920s or before. A little bit of the, there's there's evidence going one way or one direction or another. Um, so I've had some ladies who have come in and told me that they grew up here in the 50s. Wow. These sisters, one of the previous managers, uh, was here in this room when it was a daycare. The house was a daycare before, and this was a video game room. Oh wow! And uh, this is where she's playing Nintendo. And now here we are. Uh, this room has seen a lot of people throughout throughout the years just as far as long as I've been here. How long have you been with Jenny and Jones? What day is it? It's hard to say sometimes. I've been here, looks like about 11 and a half years now. And how long have you owned it? I've owned it for about four and a half years now. I have to check in because time is stranger than ever. <laughs> Are you feeling ready? I think so. Why don't we start off by introducing ourselves? All right, I'm Cleo. Um, I just became the manager at Jenny and Joe recently, a month ago, um, after working here for about two years. I'm Jordan. <laughs> That's it. Great. I'm a cool guy. Jordan. Who likes cool places and cool things. Don't forget the name. All right. What do you think is special about Genuine Joe's? It's, there's a lot. There's a lot that's special about Genuine Joe. Uh, I grew up in the neighborhood and I've been coming here since I was like in high school, a teenager. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, as a customer, it's always had that welcoming, comfortable, like kind of homey vibe. First, it seems like everybody, you know? Um, and then since working here, like I've realized just how the extent to which that's true. You know, there's so many unique people here and our, our team is amazing, our, our crew right now. Like, and it seems like instead of like looking for people to hire, we've had the right people walk in at exactly the right time and then just fit in perfectly. That's about how I got my job. And it just it, like that kind of, it just seems like it draws and all of these beautiful people, you know, that, that, that fit just right. Um, yeah, 
I don't know. It, yeah. That, that's yeah. them. Hey, Jake, say hi. Hi. What are you doing, Jake? I'm laying out the pastries. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a boom? No, I do not, <laughs> unfortunately. So we're going to start off by introducing ourselves. Okay. So I'm guessing you want my name. Yes. That is... That is... Nikki. That, okay, there we go, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little necessary. Yeah. yeah. You know, so they know who they're talking, who right, they're yeah. listening to. So, my name is Nikki. Wonderful! Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki Rose? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I didn't even know that was That's your last name. That's my last name. That's really pretty. Thank you. Uh, I also wanted to ask... Working with Josh, um, how is it? What do you think the difference between working here and a, you know, a different oh. kind of job would be like? Holy cow. Uh, it's, it's worlds apart <laughs> in a really great way. Like I've worked at a handful of other, mostly coffee shops, and it's like, I, you know, you're friends with your coworkers, like just because you're around them, but like I, here I've really felt like I am, I've gotten know who I work with and even a lot of the customers and I feel like we actually are friends and people that care about each other. It's like me and Josh likes to say that we're a non-authoritarian kind of business, you know? Like I, I just recently became manager and like that's not about telling people what to do and getting people in trouble for being five minutes late, you know? I, I, I don't appreciate the like little penalties and the guilt that builds up in most normal jobs and here like of course we all want to do everything you know do not goof up and be late all the time or whatever but like it's like a positive positive reinforcement kind of environment like you it makes you want to do you know your best and show up your best and it's like really I've, I've done a lot of growing in my time here it's been like a really healthy, nurturing, supportive environment to do a lot of, of growth in a, just a couple of years. You've never seen it do that, right? I've never seen it do that. You think this place has spirits? I hope so. <laughs> if you could introduce yourself to the camera. I'm Corey. How long have you been working with Jenny and Joes? So Nikki, yeah. how long have you been working at Genuine Joe's? I want to say like not even three months, or maybe just at three months. Alright, and what do you think so far? I love it here. This is hands down the best place I've ever worked. Probably second best place. The, the <laughs> Why best is the second? place was like, this lady was really rich, so we got a lot of perks. But like, <laughs> overall, this is definitely... How long have you been working here, Jordan? I've been working here for like two weeks, give or take. How's it been so far? Magical. Um, I give it two thumbs up. How long have you been working here, Jake? Um, like three or four weeks, I think. How's it been so far? It's been wonderful. I love it here. I think it's a really chill environment and the man like Josh is just like he's a really great manager and I think he I feel like he's one of us. It's like the least authoritarian job I've ever had. <laughs> Best place. Alright, well what do you think makes genuine Joe special? I I I think it's just that people can walk in here and just be human, you know? Like, it's a place that, yeah, you spend money, but you spend a few bucks, get a cup of coffee, you can stay here all day. You don't even have to buy anything to be in here. Like, it's just like a place to exist, I guess, that's not greedy and trying to suck the life out of you. <laughs> so, what do you think is special about Jenny? What I think is special about Jenny and Joe's is um, it's been a sanctuary for LGBTQ people basically since it's in the 
description. So it has like history. It's just, it has a really beautiful charm about it. People, people that work here, some people that come in, some people come together, do a power combo, high five. There's, there's love in our hearts for them. There's love in their hearts for us. Something. I don't, I don't know. I'm just calling it like I see. What do you think makes Genuine Joe special? I think it has a genuine focus on community um, that works, you know? Like there is a community built around here, and yeah. say one thing and you could ask me again tomorrow I'd say something else. Um, this place is too complicated to really boil down to one thing or another. It's um, a place where the main focus is on having a place for the, everyone to come together. And I think being as isolated as we allow ourselves to be just by default is uh, unhealthy and in a lot of cases dangerous for us. We really need each other and we need a place where we meet that's not just about a place for one purpose, like a workplace, family, church, everything else. All these things intersect here. Um, we will have a, a Bible study meet in this room and then a book club and then knitters and then a support group and then um, Complete. We. It's. I can't even begin to, to talk about how wide the variety is of the people who make this place home. That's just one day, though. This place allows everyone who may not agree on everything to come together on one roof, and every different voice makes a community stronger. The one thing that holds this everyone who comes to this place is that they value having a place like this. When they come here, it feels like they've come home, and they want to make it stronger. They, they want to add to it. You can't just put a thing like this anywhere. It has to grow organically. And this is a community that's had 16 years to grow, and that has had people there to try to make sure that it grows well. That level of intentionality and that dedication, it's... I haven't seen it out and about. Not in the same way. Not with the same diversity of people coming together with it. I haven't. I think that's why Junior Joe is special. That was so cool, actually. Aww. It's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> Hi, y'all. <laughs> Can I tell the camera what we did? Tell them what you did, actually. Oh. We are stamping and found some ink to rehydrate these pads. She found these stamps. A little dinosaur and a dinosaur. Genuine Joe. Genuine Joe. <laughs> and we're just stamping the sleeves. No one's telling us to do it. We're just doing it. Yeah. <laughs> if you may please introduce yourself to the camera. My name is Matt Lee. Hi, I'm Bart Husky. Hi, I'm Yael Weichman. <laughs> Wonderful. How long have you been coming to Genuine Joe's? Well, we've lived in the neighborhood for about five years, and we've been coming here sporadically for all that time. And then once the pandemic hit, uh, you guys really had a great model for keeping everybody safe. So we've been coming really regularly since the pandemic. I uh, can't count the years, basically since within a month or so after they opened. Okay, so maybe the new thing, Genuine Joe's stamp. Section number one. Dude. Wait, who's coming in tomorrow? Wait! I'm not. I thought I was coming. <laughs> I was gonna be like, yes! I get to see it! I don't know. Who's coming in tomorrow? Who is uh what is today? Actually, I've been coming here for eight years, I realized when I started working here. Um, I realized the first time I ever came here was back when I was on a trip, on a winter trip from Maine to here, and I came by riding bikes with a friend of mine, and he showed me this place, and there was music on the porch, like a girl singing, and it was country style or something, and it was really awesome, and we just hung out on the porch, and got a coffee, and hung out, and um, that, was eight, that was 2013, 
<laughs> no, I'm wow. working here. And now you work here. How long have you been working here? Uh, about a little over a month, like a month and a half. Yeah. And how would you uh, describe working here? How's it been going? It's um, it's really fun. <laughs> it's the first word that comes to mind. Cleo's gonna see it. Yes. Woo! Cleo and who? And Jake. Yes. Cool. Dude. <laughs> What do you think makes this place special? Um, friendliness, openness, acceptance. The people here have just always been great. Lots of things. I mean, all the employees are wonderful. Um, and, you know, I feel like I'm friends with several of them, so that's really a positive thing right there. And then Josh, of course, you know, is super friendly and super nice. I think that, and the coffee is outstanding. I mean, you know, we wouldn't come back if it wasn't. Have you tried any of the drinks? I think I'm getting close to trying all of them. What are your signature drinks? Chai Latte's got a big old fan base. Um, three way mocha. People love it. It's white chocolate, dark chocolate, caramel, and too many other drinks to mention. Which is why I will instead. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, drinks at Genuine Jellies? Yes, of course. Definitely the first one I should tackle on is the chai. 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 <laughs> chai. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. Also known as the dirty chai, if you add espresso. Dirty chai. Dirty chai. Dirty chai. Dirty chai. Dirty chai. Dirty chai. Become the artist I know you can be. Come. This is probably one of the most famous things on the menu because so many people seem to like it. I agree. I agree. She agrees. Best, best try and time. She agrees. Anyway, next we got the bee's knees. Honey and lavender. Super good. Bee's knees. Bee's knees. Bee's knees. Bee's knees. Bee's knees. Thank you, handsome. <laughs> oh, and then we got the dark and thorny. Do I have to say anything else? Dark chocolate, rose, bada bing, bada boom. Dark and, thorny. Dark, and thorny. Dark 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 and thorny. Through a mocha. That's gonna be caramel, white mocha, dark chocolate. That's all you need, baby. Three way. Three way. Three way. Three way. Three way. <laughs> then we got the candy says. Vanilla, coconut, mix it all together. Candy says. 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 No, walk away. <laughs> and then we got the honey nut. And uh, that one is a, uh, it's kind of like a step down below these knees. <laughs> but they're all great. You can't go wrong. Oh, wait, I didn't say what was in it. <laughs> um, honey nut. And hazelnut. No, yeah, wait, no, honey. And hazelnut. Honey nut. Honey nut. Honey nut. Honey nut. You hear that? Honey nut. And honey nut. Honey nut. Oh my god, best act we've seen all night. Best act we've seen all night. If you don't like coffee, that's fine. Because they have rock and tea fox. The foggy notion. Jasmine tea, vanilla, and lavender. Foggy notion. Foggy notion. Foggy notion. Foggy notion. Foggy notion. Foggy notion. Last but not least, golden years. It's gonna be African nectar. Caramel and a little bit of almond syrup. Golden years. Golden years. Golden years. Golden years. Golden years. Golden years. Thanks, guys. I'll be here all night. Here at Genuine Joe, we have this f***ing idiot taking your order. <laughs> you can 
look at the camera. You're gonna say, I love genuine jokes. Ready? 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 Don't make me the only one sing. Can <laughs> a sign? Because I told him that I left the the last batch of cookies I left. Oh my god! <laughs> Look at the grill on this little guy! That should have your questions in oh there. <laughs> I wear something because my hair like notoriously gets in food. So I I wear my little chef hat. <laughs> Introduce yourself to the camera. Hi, I'm Carly Coster with Sugarbush Vegan Bakery. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Vanilla cream frosting in between. It's like a two pounder. Maybe not. Maybe a half a pound. <laughs> it would definitely hurt if you threw it at somebody. Though. And then this is my concoction. This is what I like to call my biracial cookie. Because we need to mix and match. Um, it is a ginger cookie and a double chocolate chip with mint icing and cinnamon molasses icing. We call it the calico. Carly, what is your favorite thing about Genuine Joe's? What do you think makes it special? <laughs> well, <laughs> besides the filthy, dirty chives, best in Austin. Seriously, hands down, I've tried them everywhere. Best. It's the place. It is literally the place, the environment, the people there, just the whole, the whole aura of the place. Even driving down to Wes Anderson at night, in front of that place, it just like glows and looks all warm and cozy. It's like home away from home. Dude, have you seen the bathroom? <laughs> no, I don't think you've seen the bathroom. I don't think they're gonna see the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> the bathroom. The bathroom, like that's my favorite place. <laughs>
I, I don't even know what's in this drawer. Saxophone reeds. <laughs> these are some kind of games, I guess. Where did he get all these? I mean, I've never been in like an establishment, you know, that sells coffee that just has things like this. Yeah, Starbucks is specifically engineered to get you to leave sooner rather than later. I mean, the chairs are intentionally uncomfortable. They are intentionally too cold. I mean, you're right. So, oh, what's your name? Dara. My name is Alyssa Johnson. And what's your name? My name is Edward Willie. Wonderful. I'm Brian. I'm Janetta. How long have you been coming to Genuine Joe's? Um, how oh, on and off for maybe six, seven, eight years even. Yeah. I have been coming on a regular basis since about 2017. Well, this is my first time here, <laughs> and I'm just blown away. I've been coming for probably five or so years. Oh, wow. I love it. I just, it's like one of my most favorite places in Austin. If you could describe Genuine Joe's in a few words, what would you? Uh, I would say it's, um, it's very unique, very Austin, very homey. Um, and it makes you feel like you're, you're part of this environment. It's in a house. Um, the drinks are great and the people are really, really nice. What is your favorite drink? My favorite drink is a vanilla chai latte with almond milk. What would your favorite drink be? I got a cappuccino. Yes, just a regular cup. It? It's very good. Wonderful. Um, also, how was your first impression walking in on the place, you know? Uh, I was impressed. Just, well, the whole decor and everything was pretty cool. <laughs> My favorite drink is called the Golden Years. It's one that Josh did not have decaf coffee because I quit drinking caffeine in the morning. So he said, uh, I don't have any decaf, but let me make you a special drink I've been experimenting with. Uh, and it's complimentary. I said, okay. And we finally came up with a name because we were talking about David Bowie and we decided to call it The Golden Years after a David Bowie song. So, you know, in a sense, I got to help name the drink and I've been drinking it ever since. It's my favorite. That's awesome, dude. Some years back when I was um, just working here a couple nights a week, uh, my mom sent me a box of my old toy as she was cleaning out her attic. And um, there were some dinosaurs in there and part of me was like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do with these dinosaurs. I was like, I'll just put them at this coffee shop. <laughs> that seems like a really good, a good way and uh, I'll share them with the, the folks. Just a couple dinosaurs, not too many. Um, and then they started to multiply. It was my fault. I started it. <laughs> but now they've completely taken over. There's over a hundred. I haven't done a head count in a while. Um, Do you mind if I get the dog on oh, camera? Hey! <laughs> We're going to start off by introducing ourselves, if you could do that for me. Um, my, do you want me to look at the camera or at you? You can do whatever you want. Okay. My name is Mackenzie Bentley, and I... Wait, what was the question? <laughs> Introduce me. I am a UT student, and I... I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm a dog mom. And generally, I really love lots of artsy, doing artsy things. That's my, what I love to do. Now I'm gonna ask 
you. How long have you been coming to Genuine Joe's? So, I've been coming to Genuine Joe's um, for, I'd say probably like four years ago. It was actually kind of a funny story. I was studying one day in the library and I moved from like a really small town. And so I was like, started off really small. Like I didn't go very, I didn't venture very far from my dorm room. But one day I decided I wanted to find some really cool coffee shops. So I found myself on a Reddit page for like the comfiest chairs in Austin. And someone was like, oh, Genuine Joe's has the comfiest chairs in Austin. <laughs> I'll check it out and um, I've been coming ever since because it's really homey and I really like the vibe here. Um, it's one of my favorites in Austin. That's great. So so is would you say that's the reason why you decided to make a documentary? Um gosh. I didn't well, I was actually initially supposed to make a documentary about something else, but everything, nothing went according to plan. Josh, will you say something motivational? Uh, hey. <laughs> I, I've got nothing. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm excited. That's really motivating me <laughs> right now. <laughs> So, much like many other things in this town, um, this property has been zoned for redevelopment and has been sold to a developer to put condos in this place, in, including the four other uh, buildings and businesses that uh, are part of the same lot. Um, this beautiful house with all the history, all the different nooks and crannies that don't make sense are too beautiful to make sense, are all going to be raised to the ground. You guys are aware that this place is going to be torn down, right? No. I had it known. No, no. Like, so the reason why I'm making the documentary is because it's going to be torn down soon. No. This yeah. Is, no, it breaks my heart. It's, it's, uh, it, there's, we need to keep these places, these homegrown Austin, um, venues alive and not let them be destroyed by people with wanting to build bigger things on them because this thing is big enough as it is. Yeah, how did you feel when you first found out? Apparently I accidentally broke the news and I didn't even know that I... Dude, I literally almost threw up and cried at the same time. How do you feel about this place being torn down? Um... I think it I think it actually breaks my heart, especially the longer I work here and the more I get to know Josh and everybody that comes in and like has been coming in every day for years, especially through like 
probably the worst thing any small business has had to go through in this century, if not longer. Um, I was really sad, really, really sad. Um, and I still am because, you know, it's just sad to me that places like this in Austin are just getting, you know, pushed out by developers or, you know, can't afford to find new venues or hope, you know, just like even to have, it's just a lot, it's a lot. And for all that effort to kind of just not even really matter in the end of it, you know? Just kind of, yeah, it's heartbreaking. But I'm hopeful that there are solutions to that problem. All right. <laughs> but it is really daunting, I think, to have to fight such a big, uh, such a big opposition, I guess, or some like inevitable change. Like, it's hard to fight. Well, is there anything else you would like to say, Nikki? I don't know. <laughs> um, just that I'm really happy here. Yeah, I'm really, really happy this place exists. And I'm not alone in that, too, so that's fair. Well, thanks, Nikki. Yeah. How are you feeling about this place being torn down? I would give that one um, decidedly two thumbs down. Mega lame. I would say, I would say, hey, you stop that. If you were the one, if you're seeing this and you're doing that, please don't. It's kind of a nerdy thing to do, and I dislike it. Thanks, Jordan. I like Kevin. I was pretty shocked seeing as that was like two weeks into me working here. <laughs> um, and bummed, though not as bummed as I should have been because I, you know, didn't know that much about this place just yet. Yeah, mostly just kind of confused. <laughs> so, if you could say anything that you would want to say to the world, what would it be? needs more independent community-based coffee shops or just locations in general but why not have coffee right i agree too bad this one too bad they don't want this one <laughs> <laughs> and the last question moving on <laughs> is going to be how do you feel about this place closing down at least this location right it's um it's pretty gut-wrenching um yeah, like I said, I've, I've known this place and, and, you know, I've known this place for years. I've been coming here for a lot of years. And, like, growing up in the neighborhood, like, ten blocks that way, you know, it just the change that I've seen, you know, uh, from all of the, it used to be all of the houses on our street were, like, 1950s bungalows and, like, funky, like, family-friendly environment. Thanks. Thanks. And, uh... And it's not not that anymore, but just all of the development, like everything looks different. And there's huge houses, every other house on the street, you know. And uh, and it's felt like this has kind of been a stronghold of like the Austin that I knew and grew up in. And since it's been changing so much, like I, it hurts me for for me and so many people to lose this place of security and comfort, you know, and, and, and Austin, and like old Austin vibes, you know, it, it's, it's Austin's loss, it's all of our loss, you know, um, I guess I'm still not even sure what is actually happening, you know, what is actually going to happen, the possibility of it even, like, not being able to keep going after this all gets bulldozed down or whatever is happening to it, which I'm not 100% sure, um, is, you know, I'm praying that, like, somehow we can find a way to make Geneva Joe's keep going on. But, we are really, I've done a lot of talking with Josh about it, and we are putting a lot of energy and, and thought into finding an awesome 
new location that at least can stand up to this one, you know? It, I, it's not going to be the same, yeah. no matter what. This, is, this used to be like a little farmhouse or something, and then like a daycare for a lot of years. It's like a funky little old house, and <laughs> there, those are fewer and fewer in Austin these days, and it's sad, you know? It's been a really important place, and so I just like, I want to give it credit. I want, you know, I want people to know how awesome it was and that it's a big loss, but I'm really hoping and praying that we're going to be able to find a new spot where we can build all of that back up again, you know, have our, our home and our homies. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Cleo. Thanks, Meg. <laughs> What do you think about this place being torn down? Um, I, these are intense questions. Um, I think it's really sad. It's happening all over Austin. And it's really sad that places like this with a lot of charm and history are going to go away to be replaced by anonymous condos. That's really sad to me. And I don't really know how to change that. It seems like a huge tidal wave that's I have nothing I can't do anything about. Well, thanks, Corey. Thank you. Ice and cap Americano. How does this affect you? I have a hard time. I have a hard time answering how this affects me because I have to go from day to day. This is a place I love, it's a place I've called home, it's a place that I've fought to maintain as a home for other people, it's a place that I got myself up here every day to keep this place going by any means necessary through the worst of COVID. And it's a place where people have come together to put irreplaceable works of art to know that it's uh, gonna all be torn down it's you have to figure out a new way to deal with that every day it's a fact that's too big to deal with all on its own and I'm working on it and not all is lost there's a way this this is a thing that's too important to be lost, and I don't know how to make it work, but it's very important to try to make it work. But even if I do make it work on some form or fashion, something irreplaceable will be lost when this building is torn down. And if I had time to mourn for it, I would, but I don't. All right, it's gonna be one more question. Josh, if you could say one thing to the whole world, what would it be? One thing to the whole world. Um, I'd say is we need each other more than we really choose to acknowledge most of the time. I think that there are um, we get cut off from each other so much. Uh, and the one thing I've really tried to do here is make a place here 
and it would create an environment where it's easy for us to connect to each other, where it's easy for us to support each other, where that's the whole, everything in the place is designed to make that more likely to happen. Because um, most of the time when strangers talk to us, it's pretty strange. <laughs> It's pretty uncomfortable, and it's uh, and uh, there's a reason why we keep to ourselves and why we keep to the, just the people that we know and everything else. I'm, but there's a, a level of positivity, and there's a level of human connection. There's a level of realistic positivity, genuine positivity. Um, I'm excited when people come in here, and I'm excited to. It makes me, puts me in a good mood. Doesn't mean I, I'm just going to say nice things about everything that's going on. It is genuine, first and foremost. But a place where people can be genuinely themselves and be comfortable doing that. I think we need to make sure that we're doing our part to create those spaces wherever we are um, in whatever little ways we can. And um, Feel challenged, feel inspired, feel creative, find new reasons to laugh, find new projects, new encouragement when life is super unfair. Uh, and not be afraid to be ourselves through every step of it. Find new ways to heighten understanding what being ourselves is and what it can be. It's going to be difficult ahead. Um, we have a lot less money than I would like to have. This town got a lot more expensive in a very short period of time. Property values went up by a third. People are getting thrown out of their apartments or anywhere they rent. It's going to be very difficult for a lot of people this next little while, and I don't know how we're going to make it through. One way or another, the vision that we have here of creating this kind of space, we're going to continue it. I'm going to continue it. We're all going to continue it in our own lives. I would like to continue this because it's good and it works and we're a lot more powerful when we have a place to stand together. The amount that it would take to continue is a really small amount of, pe of money to some and an insurmountable challenge to others, including as it feels right now. But um, there is a way forward, and we will do everything we can to find it because it's worth it, and this is important. Thank you, Josh. I really appreciate you taking the time yeah. to talk to me about this. Thank you. Appreciate you taking the time to aim the camera and ask me questions. <laughs> Thank you guys for talking to me. If there's anything else you'd like to say to the camera, like I said, that's all it was, short and sweet, simple. Um, I really appreciate you guys talking. Is there anything else you'd like to um, add? Well, I would like to definitely say that when we left Genuine Joe, when we decided to sell that business, we could have probably sold it to a number of people, but decided to send it, to try to sell it to Josh because we believe in Josh. And I think he is the person, if, if that name is gonna continue, Josh will be the one to keep it going. That is he's so good... sweet. <laughs> Cause, oh my, I mean, I there are so many people that will agree with you on that. Yeah. And I mean. Well, it's, it's Josh, we all know him, and he has a heart of gold, and he works hard, and he's got wonderful friends around him that all support and love him that have actually kept him going so i think that's that speaks a lot right there well thank you guys so much i really appreciate y'all taking the time to talk to me absolutely. absolutely our pleasure all right well have the have a great rest of your day okay so, that's good take care bye guys you. Oh, i'm gonna be honest this this thing is definitely not gonna be 10 minutes it's probably gonna be like 20 to 30 minutes no 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 no, 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 no,
I love Genuine Joe's. I love Genuine Joe's. I love Genuine Joe's. We love Genuine Joe's. I love Genuine Joe's. We love Genuine Joe's. I love Genuine Joe's. I love Genuine Joe's. I love Genuine Joe's. We love Genuine Joe's. I love Genuine